Amen. Praise the Lord. It's a joy to be here this morning and to fellowship and to worship the Lord together. Praise the Lord for the songs that we have sung just now in worship to the Lord. It just fit and flow with the message that I have with you uh, this morning. Praise the Lord. I'm happy that my family is with me today on this wonderful day, the day of the Lord, an auspicious day, and above all, a day to declare a message of hope. Hallelujah. I'll tell you a little secret. I'm looking forward to the day where I preach so hard and so well also, that somebody jump up from their seat and say, preach it, man, pastor, preach it, man. <laughs> Amen. I hope today will be the day. Amen. <laughs> Yeah, it's not happened, all right? <laughs> I look forward to that. Uh, it looks like I have to keep on preaching, isn't it? Huh? Uh, keep on preaching and keep on serving the Lord. And the day will eventually come, I believe. If not on this side of heaven, there on the other side of heaven. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It is a joy to serve the Lord. It is a joy to believe in the Lord. We don't know why things happen. And sometimes we don't know what is ahead of us. But God in heaven knows. And He is our heavenly Father. He knows. The Bible says if we ask for bread, will He give us a stone? No, He will surely not. He knows what good gifts to give to us. We need to trust Him and believe in Him. It may not be what we have in mind or what we wanted to have, but surely it will be a perfect gift. It will be a gift that fits the season of our life at that time. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. Hallelujah. And we must learn to rejoice in what the Lord has given to us. Because what God does in our life today, it's not just about today. It is about what is ahead. It is a thrill. It is wonderful. It is exciting to walk with the Lord and trust Him and believe with Him. You never know what God has in store for each and every one of us. And we take Him seriously and His word and His promises. We will jump for joy, hallelujah, and praise the Lord forevermore. And it is not just about us when we praise the Lord. It is about those that are close to us. Because God, when God plans for you, when God has something for you, He thinks of those that you love and thinks of those that is in your life and more than those that is in your life. You have a lot of responsibilities. You can't just abandon them. God takes those things in mind also. Oh, praise the Lord for His wonderful gifts, His perfect gift, the gift that fit that season in your life at that time. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And if you think that's the end, no, He still has many things in store for us. So never give up. Be like the man who found a pearl in the field. He went and sold everything that he has and went and bought the field, not because of the field, but because of the pearl, the treasure that he has found in the field. Today, let us be like that man. Yes, we will leave all that we have and cling on to what God has for us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And that's the message that I have for you this morning. I'd like to call your attention to John chapter 16. A hope that perseveres. A hope that refused to give up. I refuse to believe that this is, the, this is the end. This is everything. No, I believe there is much more ahead of me. Hallelujah. Not because of me, not because of what I have, not because of what I know, but because of whose I am. Hallelujah. And because of who he is. Hallelujah. He knows what is ahead. I trust him and believe in him. Hallelujah. John chapter 16, verse 16 to 24. I'd like to read and uh, you follow along with me in your Bible. In verse 16, and that is the key verse I want to call your attention to. Jesus said to the disciples, In a little while, you will see me no more. And then after a little while, you will see me. And if you are wondering what is a little while, the disciples who heard him, they also asked the same question. What is this little while that Jesus was referring to? Verse 17, At this, some of the disciples said to one another, What does he mean by saying, in a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me? And because I am going to the Father, Jesus said that also. And so they kept asking, what does he mean by a little while? We don't understand what he is saying. Verse 19, Jesus saw that they wanted to ask him about this. And so he said to them, are you asking one another what I meant when I said, a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me? Very truly, I tell you, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. For example, a woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come. But when the baby is born, she forgets the anguish, the pain, because her joy that a child is born into the world. So it will be with you. 
Now is the time of grief, but I say to you, and I see it again, you will rejoice, and no one will take that joy away from you. Hallelujah. And I believe that includes the devil also. Will not be able to take the joy from you. On that day, you will no longer ask me anything. Very truly, I tell you, my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Until then, you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask, and you will receive, and your joy will be complete. Hallelujah. I want to bring to you a message of hope, a hope that perseveres, a hope that refuses to give up, a hope that refuses to give up on hope itself, refuses to give up on life, refuses to give up on what God has for us, refuses to give up what we cherish and dream of even. Hallelujah. Yes, sometimes we feel the time is over. The thing that I dream of. I, of course, some things we cannot go back to. Lah. We cannot go back to Sweet 16, right? although we can behave like one, but we will never look like one, okay? Um, but yet, at the same time, we believe that God is able to do wonderful things, beautiful things in the season of the time. Say to your neighbor, in a season, hallelujah. Yes, at that time, at the appropriate time, right? Not a day earlier, nor a day later. So fitting, so perfect. Praise the Lord for His wonderful gifts. Hallelujah. And the greatest reason why we persevere is simply because God Himself perseveres for us. Because God refused to give up on us. God refused to give up hope on us. Oh, we can go into the Bible story. Adam and Eve sinned against the Lord. God could have given up hope on that day. No, He refused. When the people of Israel refused to pay heed to the prophecies, the announcements that came from the prophets, God could have given up hope. He sent so many of His messengers to them. And then sometimes He came in person to meet with them and to help them. Oh, the miracles that happened. Oh, no. If the Red Sea were to open for us today, you know, great impact. You know, we will be greatly impacted by it. They saw the Red Sea. They ate manna from heaven. The earth trembled and quaked. They saw, they saw the wall fell. Wow, what great miracles to experience. But yet they disobeyed him. God could have given up hope on them. But the Bible says, yet the Bible says, in the fullness of time, in the fullness of time, he sent his son. He came, a bell on his a baby in the manger, died on the cross for us, rose on the third day, and he brought such great hope to all of us. Hallelujah. The Father refused to give up on what He has for them. Hallelujah. And that's the message I want to bring to you today. And I pray at the end of it, we will leave this place strengthened and encouraged in our heart. I refuse to give up. I want to trust and believe. I wish I know God's plan for you in detail. And if I know, I will tell you. Hallelujah. But I don't. But I know the God who knows. Our Father in heaven, He knows in details the plans He has for us. But He does not reveal all. I believe if he reveals all to you, it won't be exciting anymore. How many of you, uh, you haven't, how many have watched it month four? How many haven't? Now, how, if you, I can tell you the end of the story. You want to know? <laughs> <laughs> ah, it will want to be exciting. The same also. But we want to know very, ex, very anxious. We want to know what is it that God has for No, 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 no. We will lose the surprise. We will lose that sense of awe. The thing that causes us to go down on our knees and say, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. If we know it all, we will not do that. But because we don't know, and God revealed to us, oh, what joy, what excitement. We thank Him and praise Him for all that He has for us, hallelujah. I'd like to read to you some scripture, okay, that, uh, that's precisely what I want to say to you. Okay. It's not on the screen. I'll just read it to you. In Matthew 24, it says, In the last days, because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. Hallelujah. Then he went on to say in Hebrews chapter 10, You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what He has promised. We do not belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed, but to those who have faith and who are safe. 
And then in Philippians 3, verse 14, Paul says, I press on to reach the end of the race and to receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Jesus Christ, is calling you. And then Romans 4, for example, Abraham. Against all hope, Abraham in hope believed, and he became the father of many nations, just as it had been said to him, so shall your offspring be. Hallelujah. It wasn't just being hoping for the sake of hoping, no. His hope was based on a promise. And today, that's what we want to do also. We trust in the Lord. We put our hope in the Lord. Not because for the sake of hoping. Not because we've got nothing else to do, no. Oh, yes, it was based on the promises of God. The promises of God that God has for us. Hallelujah. I love this saying uh, by uh, Robert Browning. Okay, and I'd like to put it on the screen for you. He said, grow old along with me. The best is yet to be. The last of life for which the first was made. Our times are in his hands. Hallelujah. If your wife or husband is beside, speak to him or her. Grow old along with me. <laughs> but as a church, can we say this together? Let us grow old along with Church of Praise JB. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the best is yet to be for the church of praise. Amen? Amen. Amen. The last for which the first was made. Amen? Amen. Our lives is in the hands of God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Wonderful. Amen. <laughs> so I'd like to call your attention to the message I have for you. The first point that I have for you. And uh, what is this little while that Jesus was referring to? Okay, Jesus says, a little while you will see me no more, and then a little while you will see me again. So what was he referring to this little while? And the first thing is, this little while referred to the time of grief, to the time of sorrow and suffering, to the time of uncertainty. Physical pain is one thing. Psychological pain is another thing. When we really don't know what to do, or what will come out of this situation? We really don't know. We feel so helpless at times. And Jesus was referring to such moments in our life. The word that really pains me is when I read what he said in verse 16. In a little while, you will see me no more. You will see me no more. If it is a full stop, if it is the end, and that is the final end of the statement, oh, what tragic, what sadness, what sorrow, what great uncertainties. We will see him no more. Yes, it is a great time of grief. One of the great, greatest human cry uh, uh, is this. You know, where, where is God when it hurts? Where is God when I needed him most? Or for some of us, we may not bring God in. What good can come of this? Where will this lead to? I see no end in this situation. Oh, it is indeed a helpless situation. Jesus himself said, a little while, you will see me no more. But does it mean that Jesus will abandon us to our pain? Does this mean that Jesus will abandon to our suffering, our anxieties, to our uncertainties? Yes. Does it mean that? Oh, no, I don't, be, I don't think so. But somehow we have to go through our valley of darkness. Somehow we have to go through the valley of pain and sufferings. It is part of life. It is what is going to happen to everyone and we are not exempted to it. The disciples, what did they go through when Jesus was taken away from them? They didn't understand what was Jesus referring to. Today we understood, yes, because we have the whole story displayed for us. Jesus was referring to the time that he was arrested, put on trial, found guilty, crucified, buried. For three days, he was taken away from the disciples. Oh yes, some of us will say, Pastor, if it's just three days, I can live with it. But the disciples didn't know it is for three days. It could be three years, three one. We don't know. Oh, yes, we don't know how long we have to stay on in this moment of pain and suffering, of uncertainties or anxieties. The disciples were going through tough times during this little while that Jesus was taken away from them. And I just want to call attention to some of those feelings that they have. In John chapter 20, verse 19, I read to you, on the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jews. Hallelujah. Yes, literally they were in a little room. 
the doors were locked, and they were frightened of the Jews. But today we can relate with that situation. We like to lock ourselves in some room, right, to be alone. We don't want to be seen, either literally or in the media, in the internet. Yes, we, we say nothing, no, nobody heard anything about us. But something is happening to us. We are hiding. We are hiding because we are afraid, like the Jews, like the, like the disciples who were afraid of the Jews. I believe since Jesus was dead and buried, the disciples locked themselves up in that room. It wasn't on that day only. I believe that since the day Jesus was taken away from them. What will fear do to us? Somebody says, fear kills hope. Fear kills dreams. Fear can paralyze us. Fear can age us, make us grow older. And fear can keep us up all night long. Yes, that's what fear will do to us. Besides fear, what happened to the disciples? Their doubt, especially Thomas, doubting Thomas. Once beaten, try, try, they say. And you can't blame him for that empty reply. They say, Thomas, Thomas, the Lord has reason. We have seen him with our own eyes. But what did Thomas say is, unless I myself see the nail marks on his hand and put my finger there where the nails were, put my hand on his side, I will not believe. Oh, we have experienced such things. Oh, I will not believe until I see with my own eyes, until I'm convinced, until I'm persuaded. No, this time I will not put my all in the basket. Yes, we go through moments of doubt. But don't let doubt paralyze you. Don't let doubt decide your future, what is ahead of you. Yes, we go through the feeling, but don't let the feeling control you. Yes, let God be the one who will decide eventually. Hallelujah. And when there's fear and there's doubt, it leads to a state of hopelessness. Yes, without the shepherd leader, the disciples found themselves in a state of hopelessness. For example, when Jesus was arrested, all the disciples deserted him and fled. And I don't think it just referred to the twelve, but to all others who had followed him. They all fled away. Peter denied him three times, yes. Bible mentioned about two disciples who were leaving Jerusalem, Going back to Amos, yes. Maybe it tells us that they are giving up hope on this journey, venture that they had with the Lord, and they're going back to what they were. And sometimes, yes, we come out from our comfort zone. We didn't have a good experience, and we want to go back to our comfort zone. Oh, no, church, let us look ahead to our horizon. There is something out there. God intended for you to go through what you're going through because of what He has in mind for you. Don't ever shrink back. Don't ever say, I need to go back to my comfort zone. Believe with all your heart that something is ahead of me and God has put it there for me. Hallelujah. And there was one day Peter says, I'm going back fishing. Of course, he was hungry. The only thing he knows is fishing. So I think he was going to look for lunch or dinner or something like that. But the phrase, going back to fishing, suggests that sometimes when we go through uncertainties, we just want to go back to what is certain in the past. Oh, no, no, we're not retreating anymore. I'm reminded of the song, yes, there's no turning back. There's no turning back. Not turning back because we just do it for the sake of doing. No, because of what God has in store. I believe with all my heart, God has something for us in the future. But we have to go through the present moment. We have to go through the desert. We have to go through our Red Sea. We have to go through all these challenges and there is something there. Oh, we may ask why I need to go through all these things. It makes you a man and a woman. It prepares for you for what is ahead. Imagine for a moment if you didn't have to go through all these things. What would you be when the time comes for you to receive the blessing? You will be different. You may not be able to handle it. You may even look at it from a different perspective. Oh, rejoice and praise the Lord, not just for what He has for you, but rejoice, God, I thank you for what I'm going through today because what I'm going through today prepares me for what is ahead of me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord for that. Yes. Even in the hour of pain, there is this glimmer of hope. Yes, Jesus said to the disciples, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve. And Jesus says, now is your time of grief. But he didn't just say that. Really carefully, he went on to say, your grief will turn to joy. A woman giving birth, for example, he says, to a child has pain because her time has come. But when the baby is born, she forgets the pain 
because her joy that a child is born into the world. And Jesus says, so it will be with you. Now is your time of grief, but I will see you again, and you will rejoice. And Jesus went on to say, and no one can take away your joy. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord for that wonderful blessings of God. It was like what Joseph said to his brothers. His brothers didn't like him. They sold him away to slavery. He ended up in Egypt. And he went to prison many years. It was just for one day. I think anybody can take it. But it was for many, many years. He was betrayed again and again and again. How much can a good man take? You know? Oh, he reached rock bottom. Right? Ground zero, you may say. All right. But then something happened to him. He went through some good times. And eventually, he has a change of mind. He understood the plans of God. He understood the purposes of God. And he has to go through all this to appreciate the position that God has put him in eventually. Hallelujah. And so he came up with this statement. You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. He was referring to his brothers. But maybe in our situation, it is not about brothers. It's about situation. It's about circumstances of life. It may be the devil, yes. Or maybe things beyond your control. They intended to harm me. But praise the Lord. We have a God in heaven, our Father. Yes, He intended it for good. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And because of that, we must never give up. Disease, pain, and sicknesses may have robbed a loved one from you. But believe it with all your heart. God has something better. God has a plan to bless us, to bring joy and hope to us. And on that day, though we grieve now, but on that day we will rejoice, praising the Lord. Hallelujah. And then Joseph went on to say, to the saving of many lives. My brothers and sisters, when God does a good work in our life, it's not just for us. It is about those who are with us also. They will also receive the blessings of God. They may be related to you. They may not be related to you. It brings joy to you. It brings joy to all those around you, to the circumstances that you are in. And what a wonderful way of looking at life in that season, at that time, you needed to be what God has in mind for you so that you will be a great blessing. And the blessing goes beyond. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. The scripture says, Weeping may last for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. Oh, yes. We may be weeping. We may be grieving. We may be in pain. But we look forward to the dawn of the morning, to the day God will visit us powerfully. And on that day, we will rejoice in what the Lord has for us. Amen. And so, Jesus says, in a little while, you will see me no more. But then after a little while, you will see me again. Hallelujah. You will see me again. History has proven again and again. And even not just human history, but in biblical history, yes, there was a time when God gave His people a powerful visitation. Hallelujah. In that season of time, in that right time, oh, He brought such great joy and blessings to the people. And not just to the people, like Abraham, He became a father of many nations. Through Him, all nations are blessed. Hallelujah. What a wonderful position. What a wonderful opportunity God has given to us to make a difference to so much, so many people. Hallelujah. And so eventually, the season, the time of grief gave way to the season of joy. It was a season of joy because there was a great exchange. He said, you will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. Hallelujah. Scripture says, you have turned my mourning into joyful dancing. You have taken away my clothes of mourning, and you have given me clothes of joy. Hallelujah. Maybe today, Pastor, I have been waiting. There have been no clothes of joy. You know, but you never know. The clothes of joy is just ahead of you. But sometimes you have to pay attention to the little joy that God has given to you, to the little blessings that God has given to you. Be a little bit thankful. It will lead you to the great day of great thanksgiving to the Lord. Hallelujah. What great exchange, our grief for His joy. And not just because of the great exchange, but because of the promises of God. Abraham continued to have hope in God because of the promise that God gave to him. It was not just a good thing to do. It was not just a right thing to do. It was not because he got nothing else to do. No, it was because of the promises of God. 
And God has given us so many promises in the Bible. Any one of them will be good enough to continue to trust and hope in the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus himself said, now is your time of grief, but I will see you again and you will rejoice and no one will take away your joy. Underline that phrase, I will see you again. God will personally look into it. God will personally do it. And He is the main ingredient that makes all the change and transformation. Hallelujah. Let's make sure that Jesus is with us all the time. With Him, everything else changes for the good. Hallelujah. This is a promise from the Lord. And in true indeed, when the disciples saw Him, their grief would turn to joy. But best of all, we live to tell a story. I want to live to tell a story, a story of what God has done in my life. If I have time, I will tell you my life story, but that will take your lunch away. (laughs) But I only can encourage you, and I can tell you to a certain degree of certainty, you will live to tell a story, a wonderful story. We have many stories to tell in in the sports that we are engaged in, in our career, in our business. What about a spiritual story? A story of God's journey or your journey with God. Uh, a story about reading so much of Bible and hearing so much. You have a story to tell? Oh, yes. This offers us an opportunity to live, to tell that story. And the story will stick. The story will remain with us until we see God face to face. Hallelujah. So as I was preparing this message, I came upon a story. And this is a story I want to read to you. Now, I don't know the person who wrote this story, how old the person was, and on and so forth, but this is what he said. I think God has planned the strength and beauty of youth to be physical, but the strength and beauty of age is spiritual. We gradually lose the strength and beauty that is temporary, so we will be sure to concentrate on the strength and beauty which is forever. It makes us more eager to leave behind the temporary deteriorating part of us and be truly homesick for our eternal home. He went on to say, if we have stayed young and strong and beautiful all this while, we might not want to go home. (laughs) We might never want to leave this place. A pastor was a bit discouraged and he told me this story to encourage me, I think. (laughs) Okay. Or maybe to encourage himself. (laughs) All right. (laughs) He was doing trekking, climb, climbing mountain, right? Climbing mountain. Maybe a hill, not a mountain. Right? And he noticed the older people are making good progress. He's younger, he's falling behind, and they are going ahead of him. And he was worried. He felt embarrassed. He, and usually when we embarrass, we try to pretend, oh, you're leg pain, leg pain. Ayo, leg pain. I think you all go ahead. I have to go down. So sorry, I cannot go ahead. We give a lot of excuses, but actually in our heart, we know why. Right? Okay. So maybe this pastor, he was doing that. By and by, someone came and pat him on the shoulder. He said, brother, we just do what God called us to do. And after that, we are going home. <laughs> and he was very encouraged. And of course, we don't want to talk about home, going home today. Like, because I need new year. Yeah? Okay. Um, he found encouragement in that because he was not thinking about just climbing mountain. He was thinking about his life, his career. He's not making progress in his career. He's not going anywhere, you know. And those who are with him are leaving him or worse. Yeah. But he found so much encouragement that well, today he is still serving the Lord faithfully, doing whatever God has called him to do to the best of his ability and finding joy in doing so. It's not what people will say of you. It's what God will say of you. It is what you will hear from him in person that will make all the difference in your life. Hallelujah. And by and by, every day, we hear a little bit of whisper, a tap on the shoulder from our Father in heaven. Good job. Hallelujah. Keep pressing on. Amen. Hallelujah. And it doesn't matter how many people approve of you because that is the greatest joy that you have received from him. Amen. So our time of pain will give way to the season of joy. And I'd like to call attention to this Poem, and I think most of us are very familiar with it. That God had not promised skies always blue, flowers soon, paths way, all our lives true. God had not promised sun without rain, joy without sorrow, peace without pain. But God has promised strength for the day, rest for the labor, 
light for the way, grace for the trials, help from above, and failing sympathy, and dying love. If I take away all your pain, you may not be where God wants you to be. But if you take what God has with you as you go through the pain and suffering, you will be where God wants you to be. Hallelujah. And so I'm no fool to lose what I cannot keep and keep what I will never lose. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord for the wonderful promise of God. The Bible says, And the God of grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. Hallelujah. What would God do in my life? Hallelujah. If I continue to trust and believe in him. I look forward to it with greatest anticipation and joy. Hallelujah. Though for the moment, I may have to suffer a little bit. Praise the Lord for this great exchange that we have in Him. But in closing, I'd like to call your attention to some other things that are also important. Things that help us to make that turning point from our time of grief to the season of joy. Jesus mentioned about prayer, right? the discipline of prayer. He says, to, to ask of the Father and to ask it in His name. Yes, to ask it in His name. He says, I tell you the truth, my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Ask and you will receive and your joy will be complete. Hallelujah. But when we look at this verse again, we always think of God giving us what we ask. Ask, but leave the answer to Him. Yes, ask, but leave the answer to Him. Pour your hearts out before Him, but leave it to Him to answer you. Leave it to Him how He answers you and when He answers you. And the Bible says, the joy comes with His answer. Hallelujah. You see, sometimes God gives us what we want, but the joy is missing. But if we take what God has for us, even though it is not what we want, the joy comes with it. Hallelujah. The satisfaction comes with it. Maybe not immediately then, and then, but by and by, you come to identify with it. You come to appreciate with it. You come to the realization, this is much better. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord for that. God knows what good gifts to give to us. And not only that, in prayer, most of the time we think of God's hands, what He can do for us with His hands. But we are invited today in the Scriptures to consider God's heart, what is in His heart. Oh yes, may we desire right, to search for the heart of God and what is in His heart. What in God's heart, His desire is for us. Hallelujah. And make that a priority. Make that a determination. I want to seek God's heart. And I want what is in his heart for me. Hallelujah. The psalmist says this, God is our delight and we will rejoice evermore in him. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body will rest secure because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead. Nor will you let your, un your faithful see decay. You have made known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence and with eternal pleasures at your right hand. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord for what God will do in us if we desire and seek after His heart. And Jesus mentioned also about the Holy Spirit, and I'll close with this. He has given us the Holy Spirit to lead us to, get to where God wants us to be. But the journey is long and uncertain. We do not know. Sometimes even we trust God, we do not know whether that is the right thing to do or not because we have our own fears and uncertainties. And so God gave us the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, he will guide you in all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will only speak what he hears, what the Father wants him to speak to you. Yes, and he will tell you what is yet to come. Hallelujah. Every now and then we have the prompting in our heart. This is the way we walk in it. Hallelujah. Sometimes we feel fearful. That is not the way to go. Oh yes, the Holy Spirit is speaking to us. And sometimes we refuse to hear it. And we also notice that prompting is getting lesser and lesser. Oh, yes, we must quickly come back to Him. We must quickly say, Holy Spirit, be with me. Be my friend. Be my teacher. Be my guide. Be my comforter. Be my counselor. Yes, lead me on in the path that God has for us. The Scripture says, Hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord for that. Though we go through a time of grief, but God is able to turn that time of grief into a season of joy. But we need to do our part. Praise the Lord. God in heaven is faithful. He remains the same. He knows the plans He has for us. 
plans to prosper us, give us a hope and a future. But on our side, we need to pray. We need to seek His heart. And we need to ask the Holy Spirit to be our guide and our counselor. I call your attention to the lyrics of this song, and I'll close with it. I'd like to invite the musicians to come and play us some songs in closing. The lyrics here says, Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in His wonderful face. And the things of the earth will grow strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace. You may be going through a time of pain and grief and uncertainty. I invite you to look to Jesus. Or maybe you are all on the brighter side of life. Everything is fine and good. Praise the Lord for that. But still fix your eyes on Jesus. Who is the brighter light? (laughs) Who is the better light? Hallelujah. He knows what is ahead. Praise the Lord today. Amen. Let's all stand as we look to the Lord in prayer. I'd like to open the altar for prayer. And somehow in your heart you feel, Pastor, this is me. This is where I am. God has spoken to me. And I want to make this commitment to Him before I leave this place. His first place in my heart. His first place in my mind. He is all that I look forward to. Hallelujah. And I want to invite Him into my life. Hallelujah. I thank the Lord for the songs that we have sung this morning. Wonderful songs. Wonderful words. Words that leads us to the Lord and points our heart and minds to Him. Hallelujah. So without further ado, if you want, you can come to the front and we will come alongside you and pray and desire God's best for your life. I believe God is here who wants to speak to us, who wants to impress us in our heart and in our spirit. Hallelujah. He wants us to lift our head up. He wants us to smile before Him. He wants us to believe that there is life beyond this. Something great and wonderful is in store for me. I want the Holy Spirit to lead me there because sometimes I think of my own what is best for me and what I should do but the Holy Spirit knows the right way I want Him to come be my guide be my counsellor be my helper I want to abandon all today Hallelujah I just want to receive the fullness of God of the Spirit in my life Hallelujah Hallelujah So come seek the Lord as our sister leaders in the song. Amen.